Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda. A very warm welcome to my channel if you're completely new. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much and hi. So it feels like a long time since I was sitting at this desk actually, but it's only a couple of weeks. I've been away in Switzerland, had a lovely holiday. Thank you to those of you that watched the videos that I put out in my absence. That was very appreciated. It keeps the channel buoyant. Uh, but this is my first video since getting back. And we're going to be looking at the energy around the April the 8th total solar eclipse, which also happens to coincide with the new moon in Aries. I know there are a lot of videos already out there with regards to this eclipse. I would like to bring forward my take on it, uh, bring through some messages from spirit, give you some guidance with regards how to banish some of the fear that is out there with regard to it, so that you can capitalize on the extraordinary transformation and metamorphosis that this eclipse energy can bring into your life and also into your country, particularly the countries uh, where it is being able to be seen and being visible, which is the US, Mexico and Canada. But wherever you are around the world, uh, whether you can see the eclipse or whether you can't see the eclipse, we will all feel the energy of it. And remember, an eclipse and what it brings isn't just about the period when it's happening. It absolutely is about the months that follow, particularly the six, the six month periods that follows. So we're all going to be affected by it, whether we see it, whether we don't see it. There seems to be a lot of hype around it, I have to say. When I was in Switzerland and just tuning into some of the chatter, more than anything, online, I was sort of scratching my head think, thinking, what, what, what is this? Because certainly in my lifetime, I've uh, seen eclipses before. Uh, I've stood in the garden and experienced the darkness. I was like, what, why is everyone just going totally nuts about this, this eclipse? Um, we could hazard a guess as to why that is. And I do think sometimes it's people hyping things up. But I want to just calm it all down. That's my job here today, to calm it all down. Having said that, we are also going to address some of the more negative energies that are trying to latch onto it as a portal. Um, that's nothing new uh, and counteract that. OK, but anyway, let's get into it and let's see what what's wants to come through. Uh, I have set up a grid slightly off camera. I might re reference that. I might do a second video. I might not. We'll see how this one goes and what comes through. I did promise maybe to do a little mini meditation, but I think that needs to be in a separate video if I, if I do it. But I can tell you that particularly working with the energy of white light is going to be very powerful during this whole period. Um, and also particular crystals, which I'll come to. Let's just backtrack a little bit, though. And I want to backtrack actually a couple of centuries. I'd like to start with just reminding us that throughout the ages, uh, eclipses have always been uh, regarded sometimes with fear. Uh, I'm actually referencing something that I found online. Uh, I think it's a Swiss library entry. OK, I will pin it below if anybody's interested, but it talks about ancient civilization. So let's start here. It says many, it's only short, it says many ancient civilizations regarded and feared solar eclipses as supernatural apparitions. People considered them omens of pending doom or believed the sun was being attacked by hostile demons. Now, remember that belief still is within us to a degree, because those people that had those pretty um, prehistoric, really, beliefs and lack of understanding in terms of what an eclipse actually is, they were us, OK, because I believe in reincarnation. So we've all got a bit of that superstition and fear energy still within us 
from lifetimes we lived where we didn't understand why the sky just suddenly went dark, okay, and, and the daylight ceased to be. Um, it talks here about a tradition in eastern India uh, that at that in, in the old days, they believed that an evil monster threatened the sun during a solar eclipse. And so consequently, during such an event, rivers full of Indians standing up to their necks in water could be seen. And this was deemed to be a very devout and appropriate way to urge the, the sun to put up a courageous fight. In other civilizations, it was common to scare away the demons threatening the sun by screaming and making noise. It was also customary to cover fountains during solar eclipses to protect people against poisoning. Now, that last point, I do actually want to say something about because I think there is a degree of truth in that. Not that water turns to poison during an eclipse. No, that's not what I'm saying. But put it this way. Um... Water carries life. We know from the work of Dr. Emoto that water absorbs energy. If there is a large portion of the population that is fearing something, and there's a lot of banging of drums trying to create fear and hysteria, hysteria around this eclipse, particularly in the US, then water can absorb that. Now, during the eclipse itself, it is going to be a transformative uh, event. What that means is that water, the water can help to soak up what humanity is willing to let go of in the collective, including fear, including maybe old paradigms, old ways of being. And so as a consequence, yes, that water then can be transmuted, but it's, put it this way, Metatron's given the analogy of a bath. So if you have a bath, you get yourself clean, the bath water is then dirty, you wouldn't then drink the bath water. So anybody doing ceremonial water uh, type work during the eclipse, I would guide you to use the water as a receptacle to absorb uh, negativity, darkness, fear, and then to wash it away with love, give it back to Mother Mother Earth, who will use it to feed the plants, but make sure you transmute the water before you give it to the plants, okay? That makes sense? Uh, which is basically just bless the water after it's done its job and then let it go. Uh, so it says here that a similar superstition is documented far more recently. And this talks about a solar eclipse in Paris in the 17th century. And this eclipse spread such terror that the priests could not cope with the flurry to the confessional box. So, you know, we just have to appreciate that there's always a degree of superstition and uh, potential fear mongering through eclipses, but it is a natural uh, part of nature. And now with our understanding in terms of what it actually is, uh, we don't need to fear it. OK, having said that, I want to just reference two things because I know it will come up in the comments anyway. NASA. NASA are going to be launching three sounding rockets during the eclipse. Now, I must admit, when I first heard this, I thought, hold on, that's a bit odd. Why are they doing that? But like anything, you know, really, we need to dig into, well, why are they doing that? And if you really want the explanation, I can give it to you. Um, but equally, you can easily find it for yourself. So, What's got people worried is the fact that these rockets are called, let me get this right, atmospheric perturbations around eclipse path. Bit of a mouthful. So they abbreviate it to APEP, A-P-E-P. -E What's got people worried is that APEP was the Egyptian god who embodied uh, darkness, evil and disorder. So we'll come back to why NASA are firing off these rockets in a moment. But let's also be clear that when we say a name, 
And I don't really want to repeat it, okay, because if it's linked to an Egyptian god of darkness and evil, I don't, words have power, so I'm not going to repeat it. But remember that we can cancel, clear, delete anything. So all you actually have to do is to bring to the fore what this Egyptian god's um, arch enemy was, who was the sun god Ra, okay? So you can say the sun god's Ra's name to counteract any lower energy put out by them naming their rockets that. You could also just invoke the name of Jesus, of course, or any other ascended master with a high vibrational energy that when you say it, Jesus, Ra, whatever, uh, it carries that into our universe, not the counter. So remember, light can always counter darkness. But actually, just to sort of square this off, I believe that why they are doing this experiment during the eclipse, they're going to be firing the rockets 45 minutes before, 45 minutes into it, and 45 minutes after it, is to understand how the sudden drop in sunlight affects our planet's blanket of air. Uh, looking at the boundary between Earth's upper and lower atmosphere, which is called the ionosphere. Okay, so there is a scientific rationale behind it. So that's number one. Let's just strike that off. The second one is CERN starting to fire uh, or, you know, fire up its uh, engine, for want of a better word again, on the eclipse after a period of pause. Um, I have got more of a raised eyebrow to that one, I have to say, particularly having just been in Switzerland. Now, I'm a big fan of Switzerland. I am not one of these people that thinks that Switzerland is the heart of darkness. If I could live anywhere else in the world, it probably would be Switzerland, especially up in the mountains. I think it has the most wholesome, beautiful, peaceful, healthy energy. I really do. I love it. Having said that, we did spend a night in Geneva before we flew back home. And Geneva itself did have a different energy to other, the other parts of Switzerland that we have been in and travelled through. Um, even to the point where one of my daughters, in fact, she's my daughter who, both of my daughters are spiritual, but the one I'm referencing here, um, isn't as much into my stuff or, you know, so for her, it was unusual to say what I'm about to say. We were walking over a bridge in Geneva. It was the one where you can see the water fountain. And she turned to me and she said, I don't like the energy here. And I had already been feeling that vibe. So I'm sorry if I've got followers that are in Geneva. I'm not meaning to diss your city, but I just didn't, I did feel an energy in Geneva that definitely felt as though it needed transmuting. Uh, I was trying to put my finger on what it was over and above, you know, proximity to CERN and all the rest of it. But it was more, um, it felt a very masculine energy. It, it that was, uh, but I'm not a divine masculine energy. It just felt a very hard energy, hard masculine energy, uh, unfriendly energy. And it wasn't just because it was a city, you know, I'm used to traveling to cities. So I am going to pull a card on the CERN thing before we get going, um, just to see what spirit have to say. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to pull a card from the Cathar Tarot. Maybe a slightly strange choice, but it's the one that I want to use today. Uh, so CERN switching on again during the eclipse. At this point, I would actually quite like to see why they're even doing it. Let's see what the official explanation is of them doing it. See if it comes up quickly anyway. Yeah, here we go. Um, mm -hmm. CERN to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator during April's solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Um, the Large Hadron Collider will smash atoms together on April the 8th. The experiment hopes to discover subatomic particles that exist inside atoms. Okay. Um, to try and unravel the mysteries of the universe. 
<laughs> right. The accelerator sits 300 feet underground at the border of France and Switzerland and first went live on September the 10th, 2008. The LHC works by smashing protons together to break them apart and discover the subatomic particles that exist inside them and how they interact. Okay, so I mean, I'm not even going to try and understand subatomic particles and any of that. Uh, physical stuff but uh, gut feel it just yes it does feel as though powers that were might be using this date for uh, ulterior motives having said that and I have said this and I really believe this to be true that please remember that in any organization uh, in any genre including science there are for want of a better word the good guys and the bad guys so there will be uh, pillars of light within CERN just as much as there will be pillars of darkness because that's a um, reflection of society We've got the Ace of Wisdom and we've got Ascension. Okay, so this feels to me as though I'm channeling here the pillars of light within CERN because what these cards are talking about, the Ace of, sorry, the Ace of Wisdom shows an ancient scroll. Uh, this is about trying to understand the meaning of life linked into Ascension, okay? How can we awaken and how can we ascend and evolve further as human beings? Beings if we can't really understand where we came from and how this planet came into being. So even though on the surface, yes, I get it, it feels odd and I definitely feel there is a, a dark interference around there, which in a moment we'll talk about transmuting. But I want you to also be focusing on the pillars of light within CERN who are actually are doing what they say they're doing, which is trying to understand trying to understand, basically, trying to understand the meaning of life. Um, I'm also hearing to understand immortality, okay, interestingly, to understand immortality. Uh, I mean, I can't think of anything worse, actually, in terms of being alive forever as a human being without having the periods in between where we go back to spirit and recharge and then choose, if we want to, whether to reincarnate. Um, but I'm hearing that there is also something here about trying to understand immortality, um, you know, living forever, which does feel a bit Machiavellian, has to be said. Right, so we've got the Ace of Wisdom and we've got Ascension. Let's just see what else. Uh, CERN switching back on. Show me any other motives, please. Any other motives? We have the Knight of Wisdom. The Knight of Wisdom. I realise now why I was asked to use this deck um, because I haven't got any other tarot deck which has got one of the major arcana called Wisdom. So we've got three cards and both of them are about Wisdom. The other one is about Ascension. In fact, off camera, those of you that follow me on Facebook and Instagram, I did a video today on something totally unrelated. I pulled one card right at the end. I just said, I'm about to go and do the Eclipse video. Let's just pull a card for it from this deck. And we got Lady Wisdom, Lady Wisdom, the Sophia energy, the Divine Feminine. Um, and that card is interesting as well because, let me just get my camera, hold on, get my book. Um, when when used, we'll put it this way, the negative, the negative, challenging, darker aspects of CERN are to do uh, with secretiveness and false direction. Uh, but the, the, the better side of it is to do with teaching, wisdom, um, and understanding the natural world, according to this particular card. So, Give light and give strength to the good, the good scientists, basically, the good guys. Let's, I'm just going to ask the card one more time. Any, is there any negative aspect here to CERN being switched on during the eclipse? We've got the Squire of Shields and the Eight of Swords. Okay, um, 
whether or not you can see this with regards to my camera, God only knows. I'm sort of giving up with it all, really. But uh, I'll just cover my eyes. Maybe you might be able to see that a bit better. But anyway, there we've got a group, a group that are huddled around uh, coming up with a... <sighs> excuse my British sense of humour, I can't help myself, but a cunning plan, as Baldrick would have said in Blackadder, because this is all a bit black comedy, to be perfectly honest. There's, there's an aspect of this which, if we can try to just see even the, the evildoers in our midst, a bit like, they are like pantomime characters. They really, truly are. To see it as a bit of a pantomime. I'm being shown Blackadder. If you don't know who, what Blackadder is, it was just a classic UK comedy with Rowan Atkinson. And uh, they were always talking about coming up with a cunning plan. But the cunning plan always went wrong. It always went wrong because the cunning plan was flawed because it was actually created by people um, that were a little bit idiotic. So, coming with this cunning plan energy, we've got this card, and this is the Eight of Swords, and it shows somebody in a sick bed. So, we could say, I did ask, is there a more negative side to CERN being switched back on? It feels as though powers that were, the darker aspects of CERN, we've got the good guys over here who just want to truly understand more about the meaning of life, how do we get here, how do we evolve, but there's another aspect where it's, they know that they can, or they could, if they weren't thwarted, produce an energy which is detrimental to our health. We've got somebody in a sick bed. We've got somebody in a sick bed. So the cunning plan is to produce a vibration or uh, that, that makes us feel sick, maybe even makes the earth feel sick. That could be earth in bed, but it is actually a human being in bed. But the point is that even if that were to happen, uh, there is a doctor in the house. There is a doctor in the house, okay? There is somebody that's tending this person who is sick in bed, and they have a holy vessel. They have a jar. Uh, it reminds me of this thing that I've got here. Hold on. It reminds me of this jar, okay? Whether you can see it or not, there's a person here. They're offering a jar to the person who's sick in bed. And this, to me, is very Mary Magdalene. It's very linked into this divine feminine. It's Lady Wisdom. It's whatever they wish to throw at us as medicine men and women, we have the answer to it, okay? So... There seems to be an aspect which is linked into sound vibration here. Sound being something that can affect our health adversely. But sound can also be the thing that heals us as well. Um, so it could be a good thing during the eclipse, but not just during the eclipse. Try to get into a daily meditative practice where you... Uh, Om, you know, you, you actually, or chant, whether you, you chant or you om or you drum or even, or singing a praise, singing a psalm, singing a hymn, putting on music of beauty. I mean, I'm all for a bit of rock. You know that. I love my rock and roll. I love pop music. I, I sometimes I love a bit, I love a bit of loud heavy music, well, to a degree, um, but that's not going to help you with this, okay? You need the softer tones, you need the melodies, you need the, I'm hearing you need the female voice as well. I mean, again, I love listening to men's voices singing, but most of my favourite singers are men, but there's something about the power of the female voice. Soaring is what I'm hearing, songbird, tapping into somebody like Eva Cassidy, okay? that type of quality to a female voice where it is, for want of a better word, heavenly, okay? So, yeah, we're not going to go on about this any more than I've said. Um, we can see the dichotomy. We can see the duality within CERN. On the one hand here, yeah, plans afoot to bring a degree of sickness or just... Um, I just want to say sickness, but it's own it, it's something that can be easily countered. And it doesn't even mean that it's gonna succeed. Because I was given the analogy of Baldrick and Black Adder, uh, you know, and pantomime for a reason. But on the other side, there is also a genuine knowledge and thirst for true wisdom and the meaning of life. Okay.
Um, just shuffled one more time and I've got this card and I'm going to have to look up the meaning of it because I don't understand it. But I like using decks that I don't understand because it means we have to actually think. It's card number four. It says Raymond de Trenceval. Raymond de Trenceval. So let's see what this is. The Emperor. Okay, so it's the Emperor. Um, Raymond Roger de Tenceval. I feel like I'm in a blinking black adder episode doing this video. <laughs> okay, keep it light, guys. Keep it light, all right? Keep it light, keep it loose, keep it flexible. That's what you've got to do through this eclipse. Raymond Roger de Tenceval was a central force in the Languedoc. Is the Languedoc anywhere near the entrance to this tunnel? I don't know France well enough to know that. I know I've been to the Languedoc, I can't think. Anyway, he gave shelter to the Cathars and was one himself. He was a man of principle. He did everything in his power to find a way of preventing the destruction of his lands and cities at the hands of the Crusaders. But at every step, his plans were blocked. And in the end, despite heroic efforts, he was captured and imprisoned in his own dungeon where he died. During his lifetime, Raymond Roger did all he could to further the intellectual status of his land and people. He aided the Jews when they were being forced out of many European states and encouraged the Cathars to spread their doctrine throughout the South. Some un oh, I can't believe this next bit. Some commentators have, I have identified him with the character of Percival, the Grail Knight. Come on! I've been talking about Percival in my Knights of the Round Table work and have perceived references to Raymond Roger in the writings of Wolfram von Eschenbach. Uh, OK, in the context of the Cathar Tarot, he takes upon the role of the Emperor and is portrayed in this traditional style, standing upon his throne, stern and imperial. Right. Let's go to what this is about. Don't worry that he died in a dungeon, guys, okay? He's the emperor in this deck. He's also Percival. Uh, Percival, one of the knights of the round table, um, is to do with stability, authority, fatherhood, intellect, forward momentum, solidity, reason, conviction, male authority and accomplishment. It feels as though what I'm picking up here is that we have a hell of a fight on our hands in terms of light versus dark on, in this planet. You don't need me to tell you that. There are good, noble men out there and women, but I'm tuning into the men here, the divine masculine, who will still die for their cause. Julian Assange comes to mind. But, you know, it's, it, it, it's that type of man. It's a man of principle. There are still men of principle amongst us who will stop at nothing, who will give their life ultimate sacrifice for the greater good. And for whatever reason, this is coming through during this eclipse. So whether there is a particular, particularly prominent man who will be in the news around this eclipse, whether this is a prominent man within CERN, because I was pulling cards on CERN, whether it is a prominent man within the European Union, um, within Switzerland, within France, I don't know. But I'm just giving that to you. What is on the bottom of the deck? On the bottom of the deck is the Seven of Love. Look at that. I hope you can see that card. But it, again, it shows a lady and she's got the same thing. She's got this. She's got this. This is the urn. This is Mary Magdalene is often um, shown with a, an a urn. It is, look, it's the Holy Grail. It's the Holy Grail pouring water into the Holy Grail. It's the Grail of love. It's the, it's the women of the world. It's the divine feminine. Uh, it's it's just beautiful. It's saying it's all going to be okay, basically. All right, that's enough of CERN. That's enough of that. Let's now move on to something else. Let's have a look at... Uh, what shall I look at now? I'm going to pull a card from Metatron. See what Metatron has to say. And we're going to use the white light. So white light... I have got a few of these sprays in my own home 
and I notice that they have been leaking. And when a spray leaks, it's always an indicator that the energy is just absolutely screaming to be heard, wants to get out there. So there is going to be, put it this way, when it goes dark and then it becomes bright again, the, the codes that come in as the sun re-emerges and the daylight comes back are going to be very, very powerful. Um, strange thing to say, but it's as though the sun itself has a has had a detox. I mean, this is all energy. It's like an energetic detox. Uh, it's as though the light codes that come in are going to be very powerful and uh, very healing. And there's going to be a surge of white light coming into the planet. So everyone's focused on it going dark, you know? It's like, are there going to be power shortages? Well, you know, tell that to people that live in South Africa who have power cuts virtually every day. Uh, tell that to other parts of the world that don't even have electricity. If the lights go off for a few hours, is it the end of the world? Not really, no. With the exception maybe of hospitals who need to keep running incubators and things like that. But you get my drift. Most hospitals hopefully have generators. Um, but the, the truth is that the lights going off for a period, the power going down, um, is, isn't the end of the world, guys. You know, it's like we, we, are, we are able to survive without so many of the appliances that we think we need. And it's not like they're going offline forever. They, they may potentially just go off momentarily, if at all. But I know that's one of the big fears that's out there at the moment. Let's just pull a couple of cards on the power going off, because I know you sort of want me to. Let's just do that. Um, and what deck shall I use? Um, I don't think I have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep with the Cathar Tarot, even though it's difficult to read, but hey-ho. Let's do that. So power, power going down. Power outages. You see, to me, if the power goes out, it's a beautiful opportunity to be the hermit, to go within, to find the message for yourself in the darkness. What's it trying to teach you? We have the Lady of Shields. don't know whether it's going to answer the question and we have the lady of wisdom we've got two ladies stepping forward for some reason so when i ask about will the will there be a power outage or will the power go down or really we're talking about the darkness you know because there is going to be a period of dark darkness even if it's for four minutes we have two lady energies coming through the lady of wisdom and we have the lady of shields This looks very much like Mother Mary, whether or not it's intended to be, but that's my interpretation. And then the Lady of Shields. She took some finding, right. Um, the Lady of Shields is a powerful leader, a striking looking person with a strong theatrical aspect. If you encounter her, you may find yourself carried along on her tide of energy, her knowledge and her business acumen. Um... So it's not necessarily anybody in particular. It's just someone who ha is, it's like a sharp, someone who's sharp, basically. So, and then we've got the Lady of Wisdom linked into the Mary energy. I don't know why. We've just got a surge of divine feminine energy coming forward. Okay, so it doesn't really answer the question with regards to whether the lights are going to go down, but I'm just going to say that we're getting the feminine energy there. Let's go to Metatron now. Let's use the white light. Solar eclipse, Metatron, what is there to say? Total solar eclipse, what is there to say? Okay, the first thing he's saying is clear your mind of any uh, expectation. He's wanting people to come to it un when he's saying unprepared, he just means from a place of letting go of 
the whys, the wherefores, absolutely the fear, just coming to it with an open mind, coming to it with an open heart. He's saying, this is interesting, he's also saying though you can come to it with a question. So think about your own life and something maybe that you've be, really been wrestling with, um, something that you just can't find the answer to. It feels as though the answer will come. Now, I'm not promising it comes during the four minutes of totality of darkness. I'm talking about over the following months to come, probably to the degree that you'll even forget that you asked the question during the eclipse, okay? Um, <clears throat> but I feel as though the answer will come. It also feels, if you haven't got a personal question, that you can pose one for the collective, you can pose one for the collective. So it's definitely a time to go within, to meditate, to go deeper, to ask a question. Um, it's as though he's saying you have God's attention. Not that we don't have God's attention at other times, but there's something here about it being a powerful portal where you're sitting in front of, for want of a better word, the Godhead. Um, It's a powerful moment for prayer. It's a powerful moment for manifestation. It's a powerful moment for change. Uh, whatever they are doing over there, let them do it in their pantomime way. It won't ever succeed. You just concentrate on you, is what he's saying. Concentrate on your life, what you can improve. Um, he says it's, it can be a very sacred time. It can be a very sacred time. But he's saying it's, it can also be a time which will be what you make it to be okay so if you go into the portal with a whole load of fear and worry then you can manifest that uh, you can manifest that experience uh, but if you go into it from a place of peace and understanding and wanting to understand deeper then you can receive back that which you seek so in many ways, actually, what's going on at CERN is a perfect example at a macro level of what we can do at a micro level. Um, do we want to stir the pot and create more trouble or do we want to try to create a better world and uh, improve our own world? Yeah. OK, so let's pull a card from Metatron now at this point. Metatron, anything else you'd like to say at this point, please? The eclipse. We've got authentic self and wake up call. I love the combination of those two cards together. Um, it feels as though people who are, we've also got creation. When I say people who are leading a false life, I don't mean that cruelly, but just people who haven't really stepped properly into their power, um, who maybe have been given all the signs that there is a new path for, for you. There is something you're meant to be doing, um, but they're turning away from it. It's as though this is a powerful moment of reckoning. It definitely feels as also as though it's a powerful moment of awakening. Powerful moment of awakening. But we've got the flower of life. And then what are you going to create with that? You can have a powerful moment of reckoning and seeing yourself. Do you then try to live by that? Uh, do what that requires of you? Take steps into a new adventure? Or do you just cover the mirror back up? Okay, cover the, the mirror back up. So we want to create and expand in a positive way. So there's a wake-up call coming at an individual level with people. And remember, this is going over the next few months. And this isn't just in US. This isn't just in Canada. This isn't just in Mexico. Uh, you might feel it first there, is what Metatron is saying. You might see the results first there, but it will ripple out to everybody. 
Okay, so a truer expression of who you are. And I don't know, I've just really felt that myself since Easter. I've been talking about a little bit on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and I haven't been able to properly find the words to express the... um, the change that I feel is upon me, within me, around me. But it's a beautiful thing and it's very unexpected. And it's just a deepening, um, it's a deepening of the path. It's an expansion of the path, um, stepping more into who I am as a human being, uh, stepping more into my mission uh, than I ever have before. And the how, how that will show itself will be in the months to come. But I feel as though I've been going through that process maybe a little bit early. But it's definitely, if, if you haven't felt that yet, you will soon. You will soon. It's a deepening, deepening, humbling, beautiful journey. Um, but for those that have been avoiding it or just not wanting to know, maybe a bit of a wake-up call as well. Okay, so that's the Metatron uh cards. I'll also say as well that we have the chakra light body card. And so this is implying that during the eclipse, we have all this white light coming in. Why do I say white light? Because white light contains all the colours of the rainbow. You start with white. It refracts all the colours of the rainbow. So definitely, let's go back to white. White being a very, very good colour energy to tap into during this eclipse. Um, And remember, you know, in the darkness, it's just the fact that all the colours have been absorbed. You can't see them, but they're still there. Uh, So using white light, I want to also say something something about crystals here as well. Uh, Selenite, very good. Obviously, it's white, but also any yellow or orange crystals representing the sun. Uh, I'm wearing amber here. This is the amber cross that I bought in Switzerland. And amber has many... Uh, amazing qualities actually that feel very appropriate to this time. Uh, let me just get the page that I was just on where which was reminding me what amber's about. So amber is linked into uh, it can be a healing tal- talisman, helps to energize us when we're feeling sluggish or down, helps to cleanse our space and our aura, helps to shield us from negative energies, promotes safety and empowerment. Um, and it's obviously a fossilized tree resin. And that really attracted me to it as well, because again, you know, we are, we are, we are everything. We are the trees. We are, everything is connected. So something here about connecting into the energy of, of the tree, the ancient tree, the fossilized tree, and an eclipse, what it does is it brings the tree of life very much to the forefront front in terms of which branch are you on? Where do you next wish to travel to? And equally, it may very well be that are you coming down the tree? What I mean by that is um, souls incarnating or being conceived around the eclipse time. There's a lot of that that's going to be happening. A lot of powerful births, a lot of quick births I'm hearing as well. Well, uh, some some could be slow, but I'm I'm feeling a quick births as well, um, but also people departing as well around eclipse time. Remember, this is a six month period we're dealing with. Uh, so yeah, amber, uh, orange stones, uh, yellow stones. I'm also wearing this beautiful bumblebee jasper bracelet that one of you uh, sent me and bought me. Thank you very much. Seems a good stone to use. Um, eclipse stone as well. Um, but really anything that you're drawn to. Did I say selenite as well? Uh, another thing that I've done is I've printed out this from, uh, I think it was just a BBC website, but I'm sure you can find one quite easily. It shows the path of the total solar eclipse and it's got it starting from here and then traveling all the way up through Mexico, through the US, through Canada, and then up here. I think Steve Judd's actually got it ending around uh, part of Ireland and uh, outer outer coast of Scotland. But, um, you know, it shows the path. What I thought might be a nice idea, again, to counter all this fear energy that's out there, is a bit like a labyrinth. If you just put your finger on the path of the eclipse, either before it happens, during or afterwards, as a 
you you trace trace it like a labyrinth and you just send peace you send harmony you send love you send unity you send whatever you want to send as long as it's positive hopefully to all the places on um that it's going to pass through okay because again that then seeds that and it ripples out into the wider world you could also put some crystals onto this path you could put some clear quartz crystals maybe some black tourmaline as well to counteract counteract any negativity um or you could what i'm being shown to do here this is what i'm being shown to do my metatron let me see if i've got a nice big color pen so it's going to work maybe not but you know this isn't blue peter at the end of the day i've got a sharpie though uh, it'd be nice if it was in a nice bright color but this is what i'm going to do hope or peace or anything else yeah so again it's just to counteract these other energies out there which is like oh my god state of emergency has been declared and this is going to happen and that's going to happen and you know that can create havoc to be perfectly honest uh that's a real trickster energy that's sent out ahead of time to create chaos and confusion we don't need that so that again could be a nice thing to do just you know literally finger hope all the way hope okay um let's pull a card from the christ deck and then i think we're nearly there i don't want this video to be too long but essentially this is a brilliant opportunity for what is dark to come to light in our world for transformation to take place for awakening to take place and for a moment for you to just connect into your higher self to the divine to speak to you <laughs> I, I love that because did i say earlier in this video when i was reading about ancient times when they used to scream at the sun to you know send the monsters away uh i was thinking the modern day equivalent is drumming you know so get your drum out those of you that have got drums uh get the drum out and i love that and it very much links into my beautiful painting here which is our indigenous elder which is the red card from the metatron deck which is the mother earth card effectively and you know the the indigenous ones always understood uh the the seasons and the cycles of nature and respected the sun and the moon and the stars and so it feels as though turn to the guidance of them as well during this time but remember that we are all one and that they are within you as well okay but this is the card of celebrate. Celebrate and express yourself. Can you imagine if all the people along this pathway, rather than just standing there with a can of Coca-Cola and, you know, trying to see and, you know, hustling for space or being stuck in a traffic jam to get the, get the right spot or, you know... I don't know, I, I even want to say smoking pot over here because that's not going to help you during this eclipse either. It's like try to be as clean as you possibly can, N not drinking alcohol, not smoking anything, just being at one with your God. You know, this the whole energy of the white ray is about cleanliness and purity. But imagine if people weren't just distracted, whether it be by other people, noise, drugs, alcohol fear imagine instead if they just came together and just expressed joy expressed joy you know manifested joy celebrate and express yourself i love that i absolutely love that that's what we're being asked to do celebrate and express ourselves and in many ways it ties into the metatron card which was the one about the authentic self put it back into the pack celebrating your authentic self celebrating that the time is coming when we are able to do that we're stepping out into that lovely right that was the card from the christ deck wasn't it okay that's the one that came through okay i'm going to leave it there um anything else to say let's just tap into merlin a little bit because i feel like he wanted to come in as well i've got merlin's woodland brew 
which taps into the nature spirit. So yes, he's wanting me to bring in the birds. So the birds often go silent, don't they, just before an eclipse period. And nature just has this way of knowing to hush, to cease, to go within, to stop for a moment, that it's okay to just stop, to pause. It's okay to pause is what he's saying. Nature knows there are times when it's okay to pause, when it's, when it's time to just observe, when it's time to spend a moment in wonder at how amazing this earth is, to register your place in the greater universe, that here we are on this planet and we are just one of many planets and we are guided by the you know, we are governed by the, the, the sun and the moon and the stars, giving thanks to the sun for the warmth it gives us, the light it gives us every day, giving thanks to the moon, giving thanks to the stars, giving thanks to all of it, giving thanks in reverence to the beauty of this earth. Just deep, deep appreci appreciation for Mother Earth is what Merlin is bringing in. Um, He's also now shown me the bruise that can be made <laughs> during a eclipse period. So uh, and I'm talking here uh, medicine, you know, uh, um, but everything is with intent. Everything has to be done with intent. So he's taking me to herbal brews and food, you know, just, you know, uh, um, medicine can be food as well. The food that is prepared on that day, the medicine that is taken on that day, the activities that are done on that day are very potent, uh, have great symbolism. He's also now shown me a diary or a journal and what we write down is what we can manifest. Um, so Metatron said to us to ask a question, Merlin is uh, also suggesting that we can use this as a powerful period to manifest what it is that we wish to see. Um, but he's, he's talking about the power of three. So there's something to do with um, manifesting something for yourself, manifesting something for your community or your family or your um, partner and manifesting something for the world. So it's not just a case of manifesting something for me, 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 because I'm the most important thing. He's saying you can ask for yourself, but it's also important that you counter that with asking for others and for the wider world. And the wider world will also include nature. OK, so taking a moment to maybe try to manifest something better in for the seas in our world or the uh, the land uh, in our world. OK, so that's the Merlin energy. Okay, let's just see if there's anything else that wants to come through. Um, solar eclipse. New moon in Aries as well. Solar eclipse. Wisdom. How I, I don't know how many cards I've got sitting here which have the word wisdom on them. Wisdom, Lady of Wisdom, Lady Wisdom. Um, I've put the other ones back, but we had two or three other cards all linked into Wisdom. Um, this is from a deck called The Creation Codes. I'll put the details below. But look at that. Look at the power of that light in the darkness. Seems to be symbolic also for the fact that we're all floundering around a bit in this world at the moment because it's difficult and chaotic and dark. That's how it feels a lot of the time. Where is the light? You appreciate the light more in the darkness. It's true, isn't it? Imagine you're in a really dark room and there's just one candle. There's just one candle and it just illuminates everything. So this is also a period of profound illumination. Card 13, the card of rebirth, illumination, wisdom. Lady wisdom, open the door to deeper knowings. It's what the good guys at CERN are trying to do as well. 
forget what the bad guys are trying to do, but the good guys are trying to open the door to more wisdom in the same way we should be trying to do the same, to become more wise. Much love. I'm going to leave it there. Take great care of yourself. Lots of love. See you all again soon. Have a good eclipse. Bye for now. Bye.